Now you've probably never heard of Laser 3D. If you had, you'd know that they make acrylic laser cut cases that fit in the small form factor space, like this one, their new LZ7. This is a little mini beast, and today we're gonna do a build in it. For parts, I'm trying to put as much power as I can inside of this case. So we're gonna start off with a Ryzen 7 1700, great CPU, we're gonna overclock that as well as a 960 EVO for boot and two 850 EVOs for storage space. Gonna have 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR3000 RAM, so that's very nice. And an ASRock AB350 Mini ITX motherboard. I'm gonna switch up the Noctua LN9A's fan with the larger Big Brother, the 25 millimeter version, so it should be a little quieter and run a little cooler. And then for the case fan, I'm using the not to 120 millimeter by 15 slim fan that just came out of the PWM version. So that's a really nice, nice option. And for graphics, the big boy here, this guy I've been waiting to get one of these in for a while, the MSI Aero GTX 1070 ITX. So that's a really cool case. And to power the whole thing, we have the SFX Corsair SF450, one of the better SFX power supplies on the market. This guy will stay cool. Uh, the fan doesn't spin up until you're putting it under load, and even when it does, it's supposed to be fairly quiet. So that should be fine. And last but not least, we will be having to set up the case first. This is the box that comes in. The case does not come assembled, so you will have to do a little assembly. Let's get started. So all the side panels and side connectors, even the front I.O. and the buttons, these plastic buttons, these are all 3D printed and they feel really, really good. They feel like almost like really light metal. The quality and the actual um, componentry in terms of the indents and the consistency with the mold is really, really good. I mean, this feels like something that was mass produced like a piece of metal with its um, I guess rough touch matte black finish it feels really nice So normally your case would not come with this many side panels He sent me a bunch so I could show you guys all the different options that you have But they do come in this nice matte finish So uh, normally you get acrylic cases and they're shiny um, Take a look at this guy. This is what a normal acrylic case would look like. It looks like plastic. It is plastic. These are nice and matte and they feel like soft. They feel really cool. I've never seen matte acrylic before. I'm guessing they're still pretty prone to scratching, but they're at least a nice matte finish and they look really nice. So the main support panels are rock solid. These are super thick. They feel like a piece of wood or something and they're much thicker than the, the side panels where you would have your vents on, they're like double the thickness of that, and they look really, really good as well. So if you're worried about durability, don't. This is gonna be rock solid, you shouldn't have any problem. So this is the intake side panel and you can accommodate 120 or 140 millimeter fans on here that are slim fans, so 15 millimeters. This is the not too 120 millimeter by 15 millimeter uh, slim fan that they just released not too long ago. So I will be going with this for my build. Now the case can accommodate coolers up to 65 millimeters in height. I'm gonna stick with my Noctua NHL9A with the addition of the Noctua A9 fan. So this is a 92 millimeter by 25 fan. This cooler comes with a 92 millimeter by 14 fan. So this should be a little bit quieter and offer a little bit 
better cooling performance at the top end because it moves more air. So we've got the Corsair SF450, super quiet. It's gonna slot right here. So now with the motherboard and power supply pretty much fully installed, you can see there is a decent amount of clearance, especially for a small form factor build. You could fit a cooler that was quite a bit higher than that. I mean, not, we couldn't go crazy, but that should be fine for airflow. You've got a vent back here and you've got the intake fan on the left side. So you should be totally fine with this kind of setup. So the case comes with this piece right here, which is a hard drive plate. It's very nice. You slide your drives up to two 2.5 inch drives here. Your cables pass through the little hole and connect right there. And you secure it on the back side with include screws and it stands up straight against the front edge of the case like that. So it even has extra storage, which is really nice. So as you can see, I've got pretty much everything installed. Um, <laughs> the wires are a bit long. This is a case that could really, really benefit from some nice flexible like paracord um, custom cables. I mean, you can make this thing really clean and sleek if you were to do that. And I think if I stick with this, I will definitely have to do that in the future. But for now, um, I'll just have to tuck these in as best I can. So the drive tray after you get everything installed, it slots in like that. There's two little grooves on each little kind of arm here that you can kind of slide the drive into. So here we have, here's what the drive looks like. Install, you see it has kind of slots there that it latches into and two slots under, under the bottom that you kind of slide it into so it sits flush and really nicely. All right, I'm just gonna tuck these in here for now and then we'll come back and do some serious cable management in a little. So one of the cool things about the case is lasered sent me this Little piece here that goes right here to keep your GPU down and keep the consistency and look of the case without having ugly screws. And it has tech everything laser engraved on there. That's pretty cool, just a nice little touch uh, with the case number. So that was pretty cool. This USB 3 cable is just ridiculously long. I don't know why it's that long and big. It's so big, I almost want to consider detaching it, but. I would like to have these USB 3 ports on the front. All right, top panel, whoops. And just like that, we are all done. Now that we have the case all assembled, we can look at the front, see the exhaust for your GPU. Coming around the side, you see the intake for your GPU blower fan. There are, of course, different kinds of plates and colors that you can get there. Around back, find your I.O., your exhaust for your, or your intake for your, your power supply and your GPU here. Get a little space there for um, some passive intake of air as well. Around this side, you will see the fan intake vent so there are a bunch of different vent models here obviously if you're going with this more open style 
a black fan would probably look better unless you have a you're putting this against the side where no one's going to see it like i am you also have your power and reset switches as well as headphone uh, and microphone jack and two usb 3.0 so nice connectivity there and then around the top you'll find the vent the exhaust or intake for your PSU, and then another vent for your graphics card. So the GPU is super well vented on all four sides, or, or three of the four sides, and the side panel as well. Now one of the coolest things about this case is the customization. So there are tons of options that you can go with. I like the all matte black look. I think that that really fits my setup and what I like my cases to look like, kind of to blend in, but everyone's not like that. So here are some of the panels that Laser sent over. As you can see, here is a red that you would go, go in your side panel. So they're all easily switchable and you can customize and set your case up the way you like it. So that would just slot on, screw in like that instead, or you can get all red panels. They have um, different side panels, so alternate for your fan grill. This is a, this option increases airflow and that's the only reason I really went for it. But you also have guys like this that pop on and hide the fan a little bit better. So if you wanted something that blended in a little more with the rest of the case, or you could do this sort of honeycomb pattern there, which is really cool. Uh, and all different colors here, or you could just leave it open, wide open. Here's a frosted white. There's also clear. Um, there, these are all the, the like frosted or matte finish, because that's the ones that I wanted. But you can also have a, a gloss finish. So let's take a look here. So here we have this side panel would be a gloss, kind of like a smoked black there. So you can really go in with the configurator and customize all sorts of different options. Even the side panels here. These guys, they can be different colors, red, white, so you could have an all white case or do all sorts of different crazy things. Uh, don't let my boring black case fool you. This is really, really unique and that really sets this apart from a lot of other cases. A lot of mini ICX small form factor cases struggle with acoustics because you have a lot of high heat components crammed into a small package. Well, thankfully, this case is a little bit different. Because it has so much venting, it does a really good job of cooling the components and keeping the noise levels down. I was shocked by how quiet it actually was, including the CPU and the GPU. Obviously having ventilation on four sides of your graphics card helps a lot. It really keeps it cool. And specifically with this MSI card, I wasn't seeing temperatures over 69 degrees C, even at complete full 100% load. My Ryzen 1700 overclocked to 3.6 gigahertz stayed cool as well, even with the low profile Noctua NH-L9A cooler. The addition of the 120 millimeter fan goes a long way in keeping temperatures down. You can have cool air constantly coming into your case, going directly over the motherboard and the CPU cooler. There are definitely some other coolers that you could use that may give you a little better performance, some that are a little larger, and I'll definitely be looking into that in the future. I'll update the article with any findings I have on additional cooling tests. Now, as versatile as this case is, there are some compatibility limitations. For one, your GPU can only be 185 millimeters in length total. So unfortunately, that rules out the 1080 Mini from Zotac and the 1080 Ti Mini. Uh, that's unfortunate, but you can get several 1070s inside there, so you can put a nice, powerful card still. The case is also only set up to accommodate SFX PSUs, which really isn't that big of a deal. There are plenty of good ones on the market that you could choose from, but just something to be cautious about. I really, really wish that there was some sort of backplate that you could hook up like an HDplex 300 or 400, uh, something like that, one of the DC-DC powers with, with an external power brick. That would be really cool. You could put a much bigger cooler in there and make it run even quieter, so that would be nice. But as is, I really do like the way it's set up. Uh, it's super compact and you can have one full, fully self-contained system that's really powerful. 
After using this system for the last week, I really am falling in love with this case. I, I really, really do like it and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a compact case. And unlike a lot of the stuff that I review on this channel, you can get it today. I'll drop a link below to the overclockers.net page where you can go customize, do all that fun stuff, and then order your case uh, the way you like it. Pricing is what you would expect from a custom case like this. Uh, it's gonna start around 130 and that's Euro, so it is a little expensive, uh, but it's not the 200, 250 that you see with a lot of these compact cases. Uh, so it is moderately priced and priced appropriately for the market. Really the only drawbacks I see to this case are that it is made of acrylic and not metal. If it was all metal, it would be easily my favorite case out. But the acrylic is does seem to be high quality. It does seem to hold up well. It will attract some fingerprints, but then again, so does aluminum. Uh, so other than that, I thought it was an excellent case. The build quality is good. It feels solid. The panels are sturdy, especially once you get everything uh, installed. Uh, cable management is tight. It could you could really use some custom cables if you're going to go with the F SFX PSU that would clean things up dramatically. But as is, if you're using cables out of the box, like with my SF450, it was very, very tight, as you saw. But it, everything worked fine. Everything's cooled. Uh, there was no issues there. Uh, cooler clearance is decent. Just make sure you keep it up. the 65 millimeters or under and you should be totally fine. So let me know what you think about the case. Also, let me know if you want me to do benchmarks. I didn't include them because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. A Ryzen 1700 with the 1070, that data is kind of out there, but I can definitely benchmark this system uh, for you guys if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you like the video, I'll drop links for all the products you saw today, including the case below in the description. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.